What's up everyone? Today we are in the Toyota Corolla SX Hybrid. As you just heard, the car was on, but then it had enough battery, so it just shut itself off. Petrol, petrol engine is off, and now it's using the battery that it has. So the SX is essentially the middle version uh, of the line. You've got the Ascent Sport, which starts at the bottom, followed by the SX, which is the middle, the one we are in, and the ZR, which is the top of the line. Now, the SX, same with the ZR, same with the Ascent Sport, have two engines, the hybrid and the two liter petrol. Today we have the hybrid. Uh, we're gonna take a quick look at the inside. So the SX has these bucket seats at the front and the back, uh, which are all fabric. So no leather in this one, which would be the benefit of going to the ZR. But it is nice to see lots of charging ports and Qi wireless charging here. So the SX uh, has at the front here a Qi wireless charging little spot there where you can put your phone in and let it charge wirelessly but that won't connect uh, to the car to, to act as an audio function. So you have another USB port here and an AUX uh, port. That is the inputs here to connect to the car for audio. Now, the one thing I do like is if you look into the storage unit here, you have a 2.1 amp charger, which is great because it does much quicker charging than the one amp up the front. However, this 2.1 amp charger does not connect to the car as an audio player. So you would essentially have to plug it in here through the 2.1 amp and then have Bluetooth on as well to use as the audio function. Then you also have a 12 volt connector here and a little bit of storage there for your stuff. You have two bottle holders, your button handbrake, because no manual handbrake anymore, long live the manual handbrake. Then you have your drive mode, traction off and EV mode. EV mode is good, but it doesn't last very long given that there's not enough juice in the batteries to go that long. Then you have the eight inch display here, which is not the best display at all. Toyota needs to update their displays with the capacitive touch screens that do have CarPlay. So hopefully we'll see that soon. But for now you have this resistive, resistive display with Toyota Link, which isn't really good at all. You also have a dual climate here. And the one thing I like is you can see on this display when you're using your electric motor, when you're using your petrol engine, and when you're using the battery, uh, when it's charging and when it, it's using even the electric and the petrol engine at the same time to give you a bit of extra power. On the steering wheel, you have your volume controls on the left and your track next, forward, etc. And then on the right, you have your cruise control functions, which is also has um, the active lane keep assist as well, on and off, and the radar to determine how far or how close you're gonna be from the car in front of you. Now, the dashboard itself has a manual instrument cluster or an analogs, I should say, for the speed and the rev count. And then on the right, you have a two inch display which shows your digital speedo, which is what you're gonna be viewing 99% of the time. It has your fuel score, it has your fuel economy, your consumption, your range, and all these other little statistics that you can use. Now, the SX provides more features than the Ascent Sport, given that it is the middle uh, version uh, of the three in the line but it doesn't provide as much as the ZR, which has you know, different wheels, better interior, and little extra features here and there. But it did, does have enough to warrant being in the middle, and that would be the benefit of going for the SX. You don't have, if you don't have the money to fork out for the ZR, you can simply just go for the, XS, the SX, and you'll still have a few extra features here and there. And the interior is quite cozy, given that it is a hatchback. There is a decent amount of room for the rear passengers, even if I do move the seat relatively back, there is enough space for them to sit. Might be best for me to move around to this level to provide them, or at least that much room for them to, to sit in the back. But it is a nice little interior for the Corolla. These bucket seats, so they call them, are quite comfy and do hold you in quite well. Um, and it does well with this hybrid engine, which starts and stops very well and is very efficient, which we'll have a chat about when we go for a ride. So let's take it for a spin. All right, so we're now going to take this hybrid Corolla for a spin. First thing you notice is the car is on, but you can't hear anything because the battery is kicked in. Now, on the display that we've got here, the battery is about half charged. So essentially, this could probably go all day to sitting here, which has happened where you accidentally leave the car on. You don't even actually turn it off because when you go to turn it on, you don't hear anything. So you could leave it there all day and you'll come back and realize, well, you've kept it on. And then intermittently the petrol engine will kick in just to give it a bit of a spark or charge it up a bit. But now that we're not going and it's sitting there, the petrol engine is idle and not on at all. So we're going to drive and now there's enough 
for the hybrid motor to work. So I'm going to be going very slowly, um, purely in electric engine mode. And because there is enough juice for it to go, I'm only going very slowly now, only up to 5, 10 k's an hour. But it, this could easily go to 20 to 30 if you were to push it purely in electric mode. It just depends on how much charge it has, depending on how far it will go. So now we're going 10, 15, still going in electric mode. And you'll hear when the petrol engine kicks in. Just got a hump. And there's the petrol engine. Now we're at about 30 k's an hour and that's where the petrol engine's kicked in. So the petrol is a 1.8 liter four cylinder naturally aspirated engine, which has 73 kilowatts of power and the electric motor, the main one, is 53 kilowatts, which is quite decent because when you combine them, Toyota claims that the combined output is 90 kilowatts, but it could be a bit more than that, uh, given that you're adding 73 and the decent sized electric motor, which has a decent amount of grunt. Uh, based on the previous model, it's gone down 10 kilowatts in power, but it seems to be doing quite well. Um, given the other developments that it has. It has an, this is the automatic, so the hybrid only comes in automatic, and it is a CVT gearbox, which Toyota loves, and it is quite smooth. The other thing that you can hear is, with the hybrid, is uh, it's charging up as you're braking, so it's using that kinetic energy to charge the batteries, and you can hear it with this whine as you're braking, so I'm not sure if you're able to hear it here, but. Very faint, I'm not sure if the microphone picked that up, but essentially you can hear it charging itself up and filling up the batteries. It does have enough power than many of the other smaller engined Toyotas, e.g. the CHR, which is a 1.2 litre. Because you have multiple motors, it can give you that extra bit of kick. And that's the thing I love about this, is it, the electric motor has enough charge to be able to get you out of essentially what would be first and second gear up to 30 k's an hour. I've driven some other hybrids that don't have enough juice in the lower end, so they're essentially only in electric mode till about 10, 15 k's an hour. This can get to easily 20 to 30, which is where you get the most petrol savings. Now we've found uh, my average fuel economy has been, let's have a look here, 4.6 liters per 100, which is exceptional. And I've been driving in the city the whole time. Um, so 4.6 in the city, I will be expecting to see it drop to low fours once I hit the motorway, when it's just cruising. It does do well in the city because it's just using the petrol engine all that time to just not do as much work. And that's when the electric engine kicks in and does a fair bit of the work. Now it is quite smooth because you have that thick profile tires, the 16 inch, the 55, the 55, so as you can see, the We've stopped now, it's gone back to electric, petrol engine shut off. The tires have a thick profile, so when you are going over humps and, and ditches, it just glides over them, it doesn't have a problem with them. It is comfortable, and although it is a low, semi-sporty hatchback, it does incredibly well for what you're driving. Even some small SUVs aren't as comfortable as this one because it's just so smooth. You've got the both the motors working, and then the thick profile tires that give it just a nice smooth seamless transition when you're going over anything that might be bumpy or any questionable roads as we have in this city let's head on so i'll just wait here now the cruise control it has all the radars at the top to be able to keep you in your lanes and to tell you how far to the, the car in front you want to be which has been quite well. It isn't autonomous, it, it won't just drive for you. What it'll essentially do is when you start veering out of your lane, it'll start beeping, go beep, 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 and then urge you to go back in. It will forcefully turn the wheel a little bit to keep you in your lane, but after a certain amount of time of keeping you in your lane, it'll essentially just shut off. So it isn't completely autonomous, and I can't stress that enough. This car is not going to drive itself, it will simply just be there as an aid. But sometimes when you're in city traffic, it can get quite annoying beeping so often when you just touch or even just tickle that little lane on the side if you get maybe within that close to it. So I tend to turn it off when I'm doing city driving and then when I'm on the motorway, it's just there as an aid to help me push me back in.
Now overall, the car drives so well. These hybrids, probably one of the, the greatest hybrid engines that, that I've driven, given that it is so comfortable and it is so affordable. That's the thing you're getting with this, is affordability and you're gonna save even more money from driving this hybrid because you're averaging four liters per hundred. It only has a 43 liter tank, but that's all it needs because you'll get a thousand k's to the tank. Now the petrol ones have a 50 litre tank, which it needs because it's nowhere near as efficient. So a 43 litre tank, let's say averaging 4.5 to 5 litres, let's be generous, 5 litres, you're going to get about 8 to 850 before you decide, alright, it's time to fill up, which is remarkable. 800 k's for 40 litre tank, that is incredible and it will take the cheaper fuels, you don't have to always head for premium. It does have plenty of features with the SX and that's the one thing I like about it is that you don't have to pay top dollar to get the ZR because there are enough features in the SX. And given that there aren't any other competitors hatchbacks that have the hybrid engine coupled with it, it does incredibly well to stand out from the crowd. I mean, obviously the Mazda 3, the Kia Cerato and all those competitors are all running petrol powered engines. But this one is the only hybrid that stands out to give you that range, to give you that efficiency, but also that smoothness. Now, I, th I thought that because I have this hybrid, it would get annoying trying to figure out when the electric engine is, is uh, powering the wheels and when the petrol engine is, and that the transition from electric to petrol would be a bit sudden. But I haven't found that at all. And we'll, you'll see it once you, you barely notice when it's going from electric to petrol or when there's not enough juice for the electric to work and then the petrol kicks in. So overall, I am really impressed with this car. I mean, I would prefer it over the Ascent Sport, and it's not even that much more expensive. It does have the features that you want. You can have essentially three people charging their devices at one time. The only thing I would say is that it, it does need some technological improvements on the inside. First thing, CarPlay. Bring that as soon as possible. Potentially a bigger, much bigger touchscreen display that they could bring, or even bring it to the ZR. Um, more digital instrument cluster would be ideal. There isn't much digital there because it is quite analog and you've only got the little digital display. Um, it doesn't have heads up display that is limited to the ZR, which I understand given that it's the top of the line, but preferable that that would be standard even on the mid range um, model. But overall, this car has been incredible. It drives so smoothly. It has plenty of power. Obviously it isn't a, the sportiest of cars, so you're not expecting it to kick you back in your seat, but what it does good compared to some other Toyotas is it can easily overtake. And that's an issue I've had with some of the smaller engine cars that just don't have enough grunt. But this has the petrol and the electric motor working in conjunction with each other when it does need that extra power. And all the autonomous safety features that it has are great. Now there's not much to criticize about this car, potentially just this odd looking color, which might be preferable to some, I see it as a sort of poo gold brownie type thing. It's an obscure color. But if I'm criticizing the color, it means that there's not much else for me to criticize. Apart from potentially a tiny, tiny bit more power would be suitable. But again, this is made to be just an everyday stroller. You're not going to be using this for a maximum torque and you know a, a Tesla model instant electric speed. So it does well to get the job done, it'll get you from A to B. It's got cheap servicing, decent warranty, which they've just increased. It has the reliability of Toyota that they've always had. The interior is nice, comfortably fit five people. It might be a little bit squished given that it is a hatchback, but that's given with any hatchback. And all I say is a few little tech improvements and it'll be perfect. So this has been a great little car to drive. I would prefer this over the petrol engine I have driven the petrol and this just feels a lot smoother, more efficient, has the electric motor in there to give you an extra bit of grunt as well. Although the petrol has 125 kilowatts, which is great, you can feel that straight away. This hybrid has the electric in there with the instant torque. So you can, you get the instant torque of the electric motor straight away before the petrol engine kicks in, which is great. And then not much else to fold about this car apart from a few little things we could add. 
Now, one thing I forgot to mention is the best thing about this is it's not a plug-in hybrid. I don't agree with plug-in hybrids. All this does is charge through the kinetic energy and wasted energy in the engine. So essentially, you never have to charge it up and you get a 800 to 1,000 Ks on a tank simply just by driving. That's what the, essentially what KERS, Kinetic Energy Recovery System, does. It uses the kinetic energy to restore the energy and charge the batteries up. We're talking Formula One tech here, obviously in, in much more detail and advanced in those sort of scales, but in this car, it essentially does the same thing in charging up the battery through the kinetic energy. And that's one of the greatest things about these new hybrids is that you never have to charge them. They just charge themselves through wasted energy, and that's what I love. So thanks for watching, and don't forget to stay tuned for more videos, and like, comment, and subscribe.